How's everyone feeling? Are you smoked? Are you feeling fresh, ready to go? Okay, awesome. So we're just gonna kind of come together as a group and get our minds focused back on Olympic lifts. You guys just did a bunch of gymnastics stuff. So we'll just quickly go through the Bergner warm up. I'm not gonna go through it extensively with you guys, but I just want your thoughts back on the barbell, okay? Then from there, we're gonna go through a very traditional snatch style workout. And we're getting progressively heavier as we go throughout the session. So this earlier prep primer sets are gonna be fairly light. We're just gonna warm up your movement patterns, kind of get those fast twitch muscle fibers firing. Then we'll go to like light medium with a little bit of a complex. And then we're gonna do some heavier snatches, but just very low volume. And we're gonna practice taking some bigger jumps um, with those singles. And then we're gonna end the day with a super fun speed pull, just getting you guys practicing, being really explosive and intentional off the ground. All right, sound good? Cool, so I'll kind of explain all these as we get into it, but first let's get PVC pipes out. Everyone get their own PVC pipe and we'll go ahead and warm up with the Bergner warm up. And I want you guys just like so enthusiastic and smiling Whoa. and ready to go, yes? High energy. Thank you so much for helping Don with my snatch. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Oh good, I'm glad it's helping. You're very gutsy and ballsy, which is awesome. So if you just fine tune some stuff, it's gonna be incredible. Yeah. Okay, does anybody know what the Bergner warm up is? If anybody says no, I'm telling my dad. Okay, go ahead, spread out guys. Spread out, come around this way, utilize this space. Somebody has to go right here in front so I can judge you <laughs> as he walks that way. Yeah, let's go right here in front so you can be my demo girl, okay? All right, let's go ahead and put our hands in our snatch grip. Feet in your jumping position or start position. And we're gonna stand there nice and strong with the barbell. We're not gonna be lazy when we're standing. Okay, very first movement is that jump and shrug, making sure that we have good posture at the top of our jump. We're not gonna be forward and lazy here. Ready, and down and finish. Good, way to leave the ground. And down and finish. Leave the ground, because that, that lets me know that you're actually jumping hard and you're not just going up onto your toes. If you want to snatch heavy, and if you want to clean and jerk heavy, you have to practice jumping hard against the ground. And if you jump hard against the ground, does that mean you should leave the ground? Verbal yeses or nos? Yes. yes. Okay. And it starts with the Bergner warm-up. So don't think that this is just like boring, pointless work. This is where you really set the tone for the rest of your list in the session. Ready, jump and shrug. There you go, jump and shrug. 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 Beautiful, okay, now we're gonna go jump and shrug and we're gonna crank those elbows high and outside. So this is great, obviously, for getting you guys keeping that barbell close to your body. It also really reinforces just how aggressive your pull under needs to be. Crossfitters are great at getting it into their hips, dropping underneath it, and just having the most reckless turnovers in the world. Whereas if we were just a little bit more intentional with cranking those elbows high and outside, we'd get way more elevation on the bar, which would give us way more time to move underneath it so that we're not just sneaking under the barbell. Okay, so you're gonna do that jump and shrug, and then I want you being super aggressive, cranking those elbows high and outside and maintaining that good posture. You're not here, lazily cranking the elbows high and outside. Ready? I'm gonna still say jump and shrug, just to reinforce that, but we're doing elbows high and outside. And jump and shrug, harder. Jump and shrug, good. Is it more legs or hips? Say it loud. Legs. Your hips 
are a result of your leg drive. So if you think that your hips are your primary power source, then you're doing it wrong. Because if my hips are my primary power source, where's the bar going to go? Out. I'm going to bang my hips into the bar. But if I drive my legs so hard and I drive them straight, the hips have no other option but to move up aggressively. So as you're practicing this Bergner warm-up, practice that stimulus of driving your legs straight, getting the hips moving up to the ceiling, and then cranking the elbows. Ready? Jump and shrug. Better. Jump and shrug. Keep your eyes straight ahead, not down, because you don't want to be over the bar like this. Nice, upright chest. Jump and shrug. Jump and shrug. Jump and shrug. Jump and shrug, and jump and shrug. Beautiful. Okay, let's practice these really aggressive turnovers by punching into your overhead position. Okay, sometimes when we try to be so aggressive with our turnover, it ends up being this like chest through, pull the bar back, right? But if I can get all of that momentum and aggression moving up, that's going to really help me punch my hips directly underneath that barbell. So now I'm nice and vertical and stacked in my overhead position rather than being like this, right? So I'm going to jump, crank those elbows, and punch in my overhead position like this. It's punch, not see the difference? Okay, keep everything really precise and vertical. No re-bending right now. So we're muscle snatching. Ready? Down and up. Good. Let me see those strong overhead positions. Like you have 300 pounds on the bar. Palms up a little, Addison. Try and bend those bars. Show me your armpits. And down. Ready again? Down and up. Is your grip always that narrow? There you go, right there. That's better. Bend the bar. Move your grip in just a tiny bit for me and bring the bar forward. Not your shoulders forward, the bar forward. Reach up. Yes, there you go. Palms up a little bit. Palms up. Yes. Down. And down and up. <clears throat> One more time, no rebend. Down and up. Beautiful. Keep it up over your head. Now we're going to go two, four, six inch land. So you're going to practice. Keep the bars up. You're going to practice jumping your feet out into your landing position. And you're going to get a little bit lower every time. And if you, you're going to see if you could go faster and faster and faster on every repetition. So we're going to two inches first. Ready? Fix your overhead position, Addison. Crease of the elbow towards the ceiling. There you go, palms up. There you go. And so bar up, Emma. And land. Stay, 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 stay. Stand. Okay, we're gonna go to four inches, so just above parallel. Ready, land. Stand. Faster, Paige, faster feet. We're gonna go to parallel now. Land. Stand. Faster, guys, faster footwork, all the way down. Ready, land. There you go, stand. Again, ready, land. Good, stand, one more. Ready, land. Stand, beautiful. All right, put the PVC pipes back, come up to the board. All right, guys, so one just little recap about the Bergner warm-up. I feel like for people 
like you, where you guys are all at a very high level, we think that we just have to keep snatching to get better at snatching. Be humble enough and willing to do the skills and the drill work because this is really what sets everybody apart. If they're willing to take five minutes to focus in on all the minute details of the lifts and be very intentional with that warm up, it's gonna make a huge difference in your lifts. We get going in CrossFit and there's so many things that we have to do and you guys are very strong and proficient enough to get away with some weights. But if you want to take it to that next level, you're not going to be too good for the simple stuff like this, okay? All right, so for our first primer, this is one of my favorite complexes just to kind of get me really warmed up and everything firing on all cylinders for my snatch. So we're going to start off the ground. We're going to do a five position snatch deadlift. So that's going to be one inch off the floor and you're going to pause, feel that position. Below the knee, feel that position. Above the knee, feel that position. Mid thigh, the most important position, feel that position. Feel the hamstrings loaded. Feel the balance through your feet. And then the power position. Okay, this position right here, this is like during the snatch, during the clean, where you just gotta go. You have to be so aggressive, okay? So we're gonna stop here in this power position, and then we're gonna do two hang, high hang pause power snatch. So once you deadlift to this position, you're then going to, as fast as you can, boom! High hang, power snatch. And you're gonna hold for a second. Bring it back down, get to that power position, power snatch. Hold, feel that position, okay? And then you're gonna do snatch punches. Just made this move up. You're gonna bring it down to your back and you're gonna go two inch land. I'm not dipping and driving. All I'm doing is punching down into position and then all the way down. So you're gonna go quarter squat, half squat, all the way down. All right, so one five position deadlift, two high hang pause power snatch, and then three snatch punches. This is rep one, this is rep two, this is rep three. Any questions? You're gonna do that for three sets. You're gonna partner up with somebody and you're just gonna alternate going. This should take you guys about five to seven minutes. Super light, yes. We're working perfect technique right now. Any questions? All right, break, break. I'm gonna cr I, I crash hard. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm Nick, by the way. Hello, nice I'm Sage. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you too. Um, you gotta shake my hand better than that. That no, there I'm you sorry, go. I'm there sorry. you go. Okay. Um, I'm working on my handshake. I'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah. Um, I might have to stop at like 12 because I have personal training. That's for fine. Someone. That's but fine. I'm gonna try and smash it all out. There you go. Thank Thanks you. for letting me know. Yes, facing this way. So he might two inch every time. That's totally fine. Yeah. Who's Nate? Uh, right there with the shirt off. Okay. His wife left me after worm, worming a million times at Waterpalooza as a little. Man, Waterpalooza really messed a lot of people up, huh? Yeah. Dang. Really quick, one more thing, you guys. This is what I'm going to see a lot. I'm going to see good, good, this. And you guys are gonna be sitting back and down at this above the knee position. Or I'm gonna see good, and then I'm gonna see this to mid thigh. That jumping too soon, that driving the knees forward too soon is death. And it's probably the thing you're missing in your lift, nine out of 10 of you. So I want you to make sure that you get to above the knee 
and your very next move is pushing through the floor and staying over, right? So I'm maintaining that hinge. I'm maintaining that balance. I'm not above the knee, scoop. It's above the knee, wait one more second, push for one more position, and then I can scoop to that power position. Okay? All right, I'll stop talking. Go. Do one inch first, Emma. So one inch, good. Below the knee, above the knee, good. Stop. Feel balanced in your feet. See how you're sitting back just a little bit? There. And you're going to make this work. There you go. Squeeze here. Yep. Eyes straight ahead, mid thigh. Push. Stop. Beautiful. Feel a little bit more balance here through your feet. Squeeze the lats. Brace here. Now scoop. Beautiful. And stay, that's okay, just stay here so you can feel your legs loaded and ready to go. Yep, come over the bar just a little bit. Bend your knees, load them. There you go. And now you're going to do your power snatch. Good. Should your feet move out on your power snatch? Yeah, practice that jump and land, okay? Exactly, good. Good. Be aggressive with your feet. That's going to help you jump hard. Crank those elbows, okay? Don't swing that bar. There you go. Do one more high hang power snatch for me. Good. So I really want you to focus on that jump aspect. You're a little bit hippy. I saw it in the burner warm up too. You cannot have legs like that and not use them. It's a cardinal sin, okay? Yeah, so I want you to really practice that sensation of jumping. Don't derive all your, yes, exactly. Just give me three vertical jumps. Jump as high as you can with the bar. Yeah, just jump as high as you can. Go. Good, again, jump, high, jump. There you go, one more time, jump. That is what you need, not the hip thrust. Okay, so do a high hang power snatch for me again and try to feel that same feeling. Yes, did you see how the bar flew up there? I did. Yes, I did, that's what we need. Okay, good job, good job. Yes. Yeah, coach him up. Perfect. So one inch, a little bit lower than that. There you go. And below the knee. Yep. Above the knee. Come right above the knee, though. Right there. Butt up a tiny bit. Yeah, and then shift forward slightly. There you go. Now you're more balanced. Okay, now go mid thigh. Beautiful, very good. Now go scoop to power. Yes, now feel a little more balanced to your feet. See how, see how you're back on your heels a little bit too much? There, that's where I need you to be. Squeezing those lats nice and strong and now snatch from here, drive. Good, give me a little bit more drive. Drive, yes, 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 perfect. One more. Load the legs. Drive. Good. Very nice. Beautiful. Move your feet in each time. Reset. There you go. And jump. Nice. Good job. Do we love that snatch grip for her? Personally, I don't love it. She's just so offended. What? It's just a little bit too wide for you, I feel like. Who are you? Who's your coach? You got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I'm not. Okay, so where do you normally go? To the side. Love that nail color, first of all. Second of all, where do you normally put your hands? Like right in the middle of the first and second. Show me. Show me your normal grip. So this is the second line. Okay, so I normally put like them in the middle. Oh, okay. Well, then that's way better. You were way too wide before. I think you thought that was the first okay. line. Okay, now let me see what it looks like. Let's restart the complex. I know, I know. 
Don't say that. Okay, stop. Get set. Come, nope. Come forward just a little bit. Butt up a little bit. Squeeze here. There you go. Okay, now one inch off the ground. Below the knee. Push with the legs. So see how you're moving just your shoulders? Okay, I want you to think about squatting down. Squat down. And then squat up to below the knee. Better. Shift forward just a little bit for me. There you go. Now go above the knee. See how you went around the knees and yeah. lifted just the shoulders? So come back down. Keep your shoulders like this, and then you're just going to push your legs through the floor. A little bit better. See how you still scoop just a little bit? Come back down. Butt up a little bit. Shift forward. Good. Now keep your shoulders there, okay? And squat up to above the knee. Better. Now go mid-thigh. Stay over. Keep your butt up and stay over. Yes. See how you're back on your heels? Shift forward for me. Don't move your feet out, just shift forward. There you go, bring the bar up to here. Shift forward. Butt up, butt up, butt up. Good, now scoop to power. Good, get it all the way here in that hip crease. There you go. Now that you're completely smoked, now you can power snatch it. <laughs> okay, here, load the legs. Feel balanced on your feet, good. Again, do one more. I need you to be like 100 times more aggressive. You can't have pink hair and not have attitude. Let's go. Load the legs. There you go. And punch. So no dip and drive. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Eyes straight ahead. Just punch. Move those feet, girl. Come on. Aggressive. Go. There you go. Now go all the way down as fast as you possibly can. Good. Are you nervous or something? What's going on? Don't say that. You're going to manifest that. You're never allowed to say that again. Ever. All right, what set are we on? Are you guys done over here? You're done? Are you guys done? All right, guys, come up to the board. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of you just going through the motions right now. I need you to treat every single repetition like it's the most important rep of your life because the, the energy output and the effort output is what starts to set the tone for this. But a lot of times people are fully asleep. Okay, they're starting to wake up just a little bit and then they try to be all awake during the snatch and it's too late for that. So start waking up and start being more intentional with this stuff here. Carry that into this next complex. So the next complex, which you guys are gonna be building off of this. So we're moving up in weight a little bit now. We're gonna go snatch deadlift to mid thigh. You're basically practicing the bar, shoulders, hips, all coming up together to that mid-thigh position. Feel how you normally are like, okay, I got to go, and you want to jump here, and don't let yourself do that. Get past the knee and say, wait, stay over, wait, 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 all the way to mid-thigh. Then when you get to mid-thigh, you're going to come all the way back down to just before the bar touches the ground. Do not touch the ground. And then you're going to do a power snatch. And then you're going to stand. You're going to drop the bar, reset, and then do a full snatch where you pause in the bottom. Okay? I love these floating power snatches because it really forces you to feel your balance off the floor. Right, so if you come back down from that mid thigh and you sit back too much, you're gonna feel it. You're not gonna be able to go when it's time to go. So get down to the point where right before that bar touches the ground, maintain tension and then see if you can hit all those same positions in that power snatch. Stand, reset, and then do your pause squat snatch. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So we're doing three sets of that building. 
and I want you guys to build fairly heavy because we're going to go right into normal snatches after that. So maybe don't count like your first couple of sets and do three working sets to where you can immediately go into what you want your first snatch set to be. Um, I'd say try and get somewhere around like 80-ish percent, 75, 80%. Does that seem heavy? Doesn't that seem about good? With this? I'm thinking 85% plus, depending on how they're feeling. Cool? What do you think? Okay, finish within 70 to 75 to 80. <laughs> Here we go. These guys really struggle with, especially, uh, not guys, the females really struggle with, is none of them like to pause when they catch a snap. Totally. To get out, like, yes. Maybe like yell at them about that. Okay, okay. They hear me sometimes, but. Yeah. Hey guys, on this pause snatch, you have to pause for three Mississippis before you can stand. Full three seconds. Not one, two, three. <laughs> On the snatch, the last snatch, you're going to pause in the receive for three seconds. Yeah. Good. Let's crank those elbows a little bit more through the middle. Everything looks really good off the ground. Turnover is super strong, but you didn't really do much in the middle of that. So in between the jump and the turnover, I need to see you doing something on that barbell. Let me hear more of like a brush off your hips rather than a hit super hard off the hips, I want to hear this like very light brush. Don't think about it too much. Just brush it off your hips. There you go. See how much more vertical it went? But you got to snatch it actually. That's okay, you still got to power snatch it. If you don't want to squat snatch, just power snatch it. But that was like a muscle snatch. So do another power snatch really quick. Brush, brush, there you go, much better. Much, much better, good job. Red. Careful not to pull it into your hips, okay? So trust that if you jump hard and if your lats are engaged, the contact's gonna happen. You don't have to make that contact happen. So think about getting to mid thigh, feeling your lats, feeling your leg firing, and just be like trust the jump and don't make the contact happen. Do one more just snatch from the floor. Jump way harder, like a hundred times harder. One more. Get to mid thigh and jump. Jump! Better. Better. Well, who's your coach? Nobody. Nobody? So I want you to do a lot more just practicing jumping with the barbell. Okay. Right? So you have a very, like, I'm going to hit and go yeah. underneath it. So if you can really start training your body to jump harder, it's going to do wonders for your lifts. Okay? okay? Thank you. Good. So right off the floor, I saw this. Okay, so this tells me that you're lifting with your back off the ground. I need to see this, right? So everything is locked into place, and the, the thing that initiates the move is pushing through the floor. It's not doing that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Try one more, just snatch. Push through the floor, lock your back in. Push. Little more balance through your feet. Do one more. 
Your toes and your heels need to push equally through the floor. Yes, that's better. Now keep it closer, but that was much better. Good job. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Everything. <laughs> Everything was wrong from start to finish. <laughs> Do you know anything about the Olympic lift, Jorge? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take a look at this the first time I've snatched? Little more legs. Okay, so right off the ground, and this usually happens with people who have stronger legs. You're setting and then you're doing this. Okay, so your very first movement off the floor is the bar moving away from your body. And then you're coming and you're bringing it in and then you're kicking your hips and moving underneath it. So if you can just control those first couple inches off the ground and have the bar either move straight up exactly or slightly back, it's probably gonna change the whole rest of your lift to where you actually feel like you can jump as opposed to just around, hips, under. You know what I mean? Push with those legs. So I like the higher hip start for you, remember? But if you're gonna have a higher hip start, you have to be even more aggressive with your legs driving from the floor so that your back doesn't take over because of that position we have you in, okay? Push. That's better. Good. And it's light, so you're able to, but try really hard to get the timing of jumping and going down as opposed to jumping, pulling up, and then moving down. Like you literally pulled that bar a couple of inches up. So imagine that it's heavier and you can't physically do that. Get the timing of jumping up, moving down, jumping up, moving down. Okay, let me see one more just off the ground. Put some more weight on. Crank those elbows, 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 elbows. Pull. That a girl, that was better, much better. More jump, Luke. Don't just go through the motions of it. Actually be super aggressive through the middle, okay? I'm watching just off the floor. Better, more legs, more legs. It's hard because it's so light, you like feel like you don't have that feedback of jumping hard. So let's try to change it and make it more of like an auditory cue. Like I was telling him, I want it to sound more like you're brushing off the hips because you're jumping hard, not that you're banging it off the hips because you're trying to create power yeah, yeah, yeah. from that contact. We don't create power from the contact. We create power from the jump and then the contact just happens. And it's this very light brushing mo motion and movement up. Okay, okay so let me hear it. Yes, that was better, much, exactly. It's just doing that is gonna give it that much more elevation yeah. because the hitting feels aggressive and it feels explosive, but it's not as efficient and that's the problem. Whereas that got just a little bit more of a vertical, exactly. Good. You forgot to jump. So I think you were trying to pull under, but you gotta jump first, okay? Oh, so you like blacked out? Yeah, jump. boy. very nice, very nice. Good. 
Good. Great overhead position. Really beautiful. Now I want you to just be a little bit more aggressive with your footwork. So you're so beautiful here that it's like almost too graceful. Add a little bit of like sass with that grace and like let me see your footwork be so aggressive. Like when you're punching into your bottom position, I want to see your feet be really aggressive. Let it match this because this is so aggressive, but your feet could be a little bit more aggressive. Okay, good job, girl. Come on, Emma. Oh, yeah, love that one. So your pull under is so good and aggressive that sometimes you're probably going to feel like you're banking on that, right? So don't rely on it. Give it support by jumping harder. You cannot jump too hard, I promise. So if you add an aggressive jump with that super aggressive pull under, you're going to add so much weight to your snatch. It's just the last missing piece. But that looks, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously like really fine tuning and being nitpicky. Yeah, no, it looks great. Yeah. Jump hard. Okay, so when, <laughs> no, it was a bad, I see you trying to jump hard. When you pull your elbows high and outside, it's going to help you jump more vertically because you're used to the power through the hips, right? And when that happens, where does the bar go? Out. Out. And luckily, you're really aggressive on your turnover so you can get away with it to a certain weight. And then where do you normally miss your snatches? Out in front of you or behind? So that is because you're swinging and then your, aggress your turnover is so aggressive that all the momentum continues moving back behind you. So if you can add that aggressive jump and then really focus on this, that's gonna change everything for you. So what are my elbows doing now? You're like, your elbows are super flat. Everything's here. As a, yeah. So jump up and pull. Exactly. Try to think about almost jumping and pulling simultaneously. When you're jumping, your elbows are cranking high and outside. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, sorry guys. So if you're done with this complex, you're moving straight into five total snatches. I want five singles only. So be very strategic with each of your weights that you're jumping, okay? Because you only get five lifts and we're doing full snatches now. Any questions? All right, let's do it. That was better. When you go around your knees, it sits your weight back to your heels. So then you're like, oh my gosh, my weight's all the way back on my heels. So then you end up shifting forward too much. All of that to say, <laughs> there's a lot of information, all of that to say, right when you leave the ground, the bar either needs to move straight up or slightly back, but it absolutely cannot move forward. Maybe, yeah, maybe butt up a tiny bit and then think about everything rising together, right? So my shoulders, hips, bar, everything comes up together. No part moves alone. They, you're do exactly. Your chest is coming up first. Yeah, so if you like really tune in to, okay, how does my back angle feel in my start position? Where is it? Where's that angle? Okay, now I'm just gonna maintain that angle and I'm just gonna push my whole foot through the floor. And I'm gonna keep it, 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 and then I'm gonna go. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah! That was a very good one. Very good. Keep jumping hard. Jump, jump, jump. I 
want you to start with your hips just a tiny bit higher. Yeah, because you're you're setting your back and your butt is dropping just a little bit too low. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that like you need to straighten your legs like this, but you're here. I just want you here. And then I want you to maintain that off the floor. Can you do one more there really quick? Yeah. Or is it too heavy? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, that doesn't count on my second one. No, it doesn't count. So don't go until I say okay, because I want to make sure you're right in the right position. Okay. Don't do that. That's my expert coaching advice. Don't do that. Well, set your back so I can see like truly where you're gonna be. There, go. Good. That was way better off the ground. Now the last missing piece, after you jump, and it's funny because you were actually doing this on the Bergner warm-up. What did I tell you to do on the Bergner warm-up? What were you doing on the Bergner warm-up that I didn't want you doing? Yes, so at the top of your jump, you were here. Okay, guess what? When you're snatching, you're here, right? And so at the very top, you're actually having to swing it around you because you're in the way of that bar. When you're here at the top, your head and your shoulders, you're in the way of the bar. So now the bar has to kick out a little bit as you're turning it over. So when you jump and you jump vertically, okay, and then you pull you got to get out of the way of the bar, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way until it passes your face and then you can punch underneath it. And it all happens in a millisecond. So it's not throwing your shoulders back. That's not what I'm telling you to do. I'm telling you to jump hard and then get out of the way and under. So your shoulders are here in the power position, right? But then when I naturally jump hard, I should jump so hard that at the top, my shoulders are now behind the bar, whereas you're still over the bar. So behind the bar, now I'm here and my lats are active as I'm pulling under. This is the position you should be in. Right now you're here, and then you're here, and then you're here. You know what I mean? Let's try one more, because I'm gonna, it's gonna bother me if you don't do it right. So that's gonna start with the starting position. There. Up and around. Up and around. Yeah, better. Better. Good job. I tried to think about it. What's I got? Here. Yeah, exactly. Are you able to do this, Paige? Okay. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. Hey. Keep it close. Okay. See, now the hips are really being exposed, right? Because you can't hide it with heavier percentages. So lots and lots of jumping practice for her. Like all the vertical jumps that she can possibly do just so she can start getting some repetitions in where her legs are her power source and not the hips. Here's my rule of thumb. Cause sometimes it's a style thing, right? Like sometimes it's so ingrained at a certain point that it's a really hard habit to break. So if she's gonna be a hip dominant lifter, guess what? You have to keep it closer than every other person here. Like this motion for her has to be her only focus in the world because she's just gonna have this. So our rule of thumb, my dad always says, if you're gonna hit the bar with your hips, then you better keep it closer than everyone else in the room. Okay, so that could kind of be your focal point, right? <laughs> and then one last thing for hip bangers, focusing on the land, can really fix their jump. So when they're hip hitters, 
their feet almost get stuck to the ground because they're doing this and then they're coming back down. If you saw that last match, her feet didn't really move. So if she focuses on landing hard, like actually moving her feet out, it's probably gonna trick her body into jumping more. So the cue is jump hard, land hard, get her feeling that motion, and it's probably gonna fix that motion. You know what I mean? Cool. Okay, how are we doing? Was that five singles for everybody? <laughs> okay. Finish up and then come up to the board really quick. Keep it close. Nice, way better. You really started keeping it closer on the heavier ones. Great work. Come on, Tyler. So right off the floor, all of your weight sat behind the bar. So if I'm watching from the side and you're snatching, I should see you balance with that bar the whole entire time. Whereas on that one, right off the floor, everything sat back, right? Just because it's pulling you forward doesn't mean you have to sit super far back. All it means is you can't let it pull you forward. But don't overcorrect by trying to sit back on it. Stay balanced directly above that bar. You want to give it one more go? <coughs> All right, come on. So you're kind of the same as what I was telling Emma. Your pull under is phenomenal. But when it gets to those like 95% plus, you cannot rely on that. What do you need to rely on? Yeah, you're jumping, jumping, jumping. I know that's an issue with you. I think that's, that's a good cue. That's when you throw in more. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. However, your timing is a little off. So that's a little bit of like that I'm up and then I'm down. If we can get you feeling more of that like jump up, shrug down, jump up, shrug down, jump up, not jump up, get up and down underneath that bar. So start thinking about that timing a little bit more, okay? All right, guys, so come in just a little bit closer. So the last thing that I wanna do are snatch speed pulls. They're all singles. So you're gonna do a pull, let it drop, do a pull, let it drop, do a pull. And the focus behind this is to move the bar off the ground as if it is a one rep max, like the most important snatch of your life that you have to attack from start to finish. Right? Sometimes we're so lackadaisical off the ground because we're focusing on getting extension or we're focusing on the turnover or we're focusing on getting underneath the barbell and we're not dialed in right off the floor. But what we don't understand is right off the floor is when we're really either setting ourselves up for success or failure. So if you can attack it right off the ground, it's, you're, can, you're gonna be able to carry that momentum all the way into the rest of your lift. Whereas if you're a little bit lax, a little bit unfocused off the floor, then it's really hard to make up for that with higher percentages later in the lift. You know what I mean? So I want all of these pulls, right? So off the ground, you're attacking it right off the ground and you're being as explosive as you can off the floor and then through your jump. Every single one of you needs to jump harder. You guys are at like 90% effort output with your jumps, right? If you guys can really start getting that stimulus of what it means to actually empty the tank, 
when you jump with the barbell in your hands, you guys will all add 10 pounds to your lifts. No problem with the strength that you have now. But you have to build confidence jumping hard and not just focusing on being fast under the bar. You can't be fast under the bar if you don't have elevation on the bar. And you can't get elevation on the barbell if you don't jump. So let's practice the aggressive jumping and training that stimulus and strengthening that explosiveness on these speed pulls. Does that make sense? So I want it to be first set 95% of your one rep max snatch, second set 100, third set 105%. So is it gonna feel pretty heavy? Is it gonna feel like it moves fast off the ground? No, but are you still gonna try to make it move fast off the ground? Yes. I don't care how slow it is as long as you're trying to move it fast, okay? If you guys want to use straps, if you guys have straps, you can use them. I like pulling with straps a little bit. It takes the pressure off of my thumbs feeling like they're going to rip off, right? And I can actually focus in on jumping hard. Any questions? All right, let's go. <coughs> A hundred percent. Yeah. Guys, I should see you leaving the ground on your poles. I do not want your poles to look like this. You're not just pushing off the toes. You're actually leaving the ground on your jump. Okay. Yes. Jump harder, Paige. Better. Get up, up, up. Yes, good. Jump harder, Bailey. Push. That a girl. I actually let, I like to let the bar just drop after I jump. Because trying to hold on to it kills your hands. So when you jump, just kind of let go of it and let it drop, okay? Like that, yeah. It's okay to let it drop like that. You guys don't have to hold on to the bar. Jump! Good. Jump! Yeah, that a girl. Good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you don't have to do it super tight. Use it as like a tactile cue of how you're bracing against the belt. But yeah, I think that's fine. Um, no. No, because I don't think it'll mess you up during your actual snatch. And if we're doing pulls, we're trying to strengthen the lift off the floor. So if you're going to wear a belt, fine, but just don't tighten it all the way, OK? Thank you. <coughs> Focus on balance. Push. Good. Don't try and be so mechanical with your scoop. Let the scoop happen because you're jumping. Get it moving. Go. That a girl. Much better. Keep the speed past the knee. Okay, so it looks great off the ground. Don't let that speed go away. Keep the speed on the bar. Come on. Push. Yes, 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 that was much better. Good job. Okay, this is where we get to practice, okay? That a girl. Now, when you set your butt a little bit higher, you need to use more legs, a little bit lower. Yep, right there, push. Pass the knee, stay over. Pass the knee, stay over. Better. That might be a little too high. Just a, with the start. Just okay. drop it like a little bit. Good. So right when you start. 
start, you're up here, and then you're pulling, and you're dropping your butt, and you're lifting your shoulders. So get set, and then push right off the floor, okay? More legs, Seth. Yeah. So what does that mean? Good, too soon. Just a second too soon. Very good, very good. These will be good for you to feel that balance. I've been doing a lot. Good. Perfect. Through the balls of my feet. Good. I'm just going to try a little higher hip start, just for fun. Just try a little higher hip start. Okay. I just want to see what it looks like. There. Yeah. Nice. I like that better for you. There, push. Nice. Yeah. I think that would be a great thing for you. I think the higher hip was working well for me because yeah. I had so much weight in the heel. But I started with the bell and like jumping harder. Yeah. And I definitely I feel a major difference in the middle. Totally. Like, I no longer feel like it's kind of kicking out and crashing on me. And now I yeah. feel way more like control. Yeah. I drive through the middle of my foot. Almost almost as if like yes. when I pull now, I'm not like hammering my heel to the ground, I'm thinking more like pulling my balls in here and then like barely touching my feet, my heel. So that is a very good cue for super athletic people. Where do athletic people like to be? They like to be on the ball of their foot, right? Like we want to be able to move in any direction. So when you take a really athletic person and you sit them back too far on their heels, they don't know how to move and they start doing all this weird stuff. So that was a great kind of self-realization of like, wow, this is just where I feel really athletic or I feel really fast or whatever. That's a great cue for you. Yes. Yeah. Well, if I'm sitting back like this, what do you think is going to happen? Yes. So that's why you felt lazy through your quads. That's great, Tyler. Very good. Yes, exactly. Very good balance. Don't go around the knees, though. Set the lats, too, when you do that. Yeah, there you go. What do you do with that $500? There you go, Bailey. That was better. Yeah, these are hard. Jump harder through the middle. Drive! Yeah, better. Atta girl. You are built for weightlifting. You guys done? Yeah, okay. Is everybody done? Let's, yeah, let's see it. Start with your hips higher, Seth. Just a little bit higher. There, push. Yes, yes. Now when you do that, jump. Hips a little bit higher in your start. There. Yeah. Because what happens with you is you come here and then you set low and then right off the floor your butt comes up and then you end up jumping too soon and then you sneak underneath it, right? So I think if we can get you a little bit higher this way, you won't have a tendency to do this first and you'll actually stay loaded. That way you'll feel like you're more able to jump. I don't know why, it just seems like a cue for me to like think of my legs when I sit lower. I don't know why. That's everybody because you are putting yourself in a squatty position and when we think legs, we think squat, right? right? Yeah. But it's not about getting to a squatty position, it's about where can I set my back in the start that's gonna set me up for success to be balanced when I jump. Because when you think legs like this and your butt drops, 
you're actually not using your legs off the ground. You're feeling loaded here, but then right off the floor, your butt shoots up, right? right? So this is no legs yeah. at all. And then that's why this is happening. So you can still, you're gonna feel more activation and tension probably through your back, but you can still push through your legs off the floor, load them, and then you can jump from there. And it's gonna put you in a better position, okay? Do you wanna do this, Lean? I don't know. I don't know how they're feeling or if they'll be honest about how they're feeling. Okay. Do you have any, like, like, do you have jump drills, like? So I think what would be really good for you is if you did, like, two position pause snatch pulls. So your first position that you would pause in would be right below the knee. So that first initial lift off, you're going to practice not shooting your butt up first. So you're here. And then you're going to practice getting to mid thigh and you're going to pause here. Okay. And then you're just going to jump and shrug from there. I think that would be a great exercise okay. for you. Right. Okay. Done. All right, guys, go ahead, come up to the board for a little debrief. Better posture at the top, Tyler. See at the very end, you're here. Get a little bit better posture. All right, nice work, you guys. So moving forward with all of you, we're going to practice being way more intentional with the priming sets, OK? Not just trying to turn everything on here, but Pay attention to your positions off the floor. Focus on staying over to that mid-thigh position. Of all of the athletes and lifts that I've seen over the years, I'd say the top mistake for people is not getting to the mid-thigh position properly. That pull off the floor, that understanding of the positions off the floor is so crucial for heavy, heavy lifts. So if you can get yourself to mid-thigh, right, the proper mid-thigh position where your hamstrings are loaded and you're balancing your feet, that's what's gonna allow you to actually jump hard, right? And then when you actually jump hard, everything moves vertically and it elevates that bar which then gives you all the time in the world to have an epic pull under and an epic turnover. But drilling and drilling and drilling those positions off the floor and not just thinking grip and rip and my body will just do what it needs to do. You can grip and rip off the floor if you've earned your positions, if you've drilled your positions. That's gonna set you up for success down the line. If you guys ever have any questions on your specific list, or if you just want to shoot me a quick video and be like, hey, can you just take a look at this really fast? What do I need to work on? What's a, a drill I can do? Please feel free to contact me. Uh, you guys were awesome. Thanks for being open to being coached. Very excited to see you guys in this upcoming season. Okay? Good job.